An American League battle, East versus Central. It's the Toronto Blue Jays against the Chicago White Sox. Live on 2K Sports. Saturday night, Major League Baseball. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Crock here on 2K Sports. A look at Carlos Quentin, no doubt, getting ready for some offensive punch. They love being here, and they're ready to cheer. Over 40,000 in their seats. The starting pitching, we'll see Jared Washburn. Steve, he's facing that Toronto lineup today. What is he thinking about? Now Jared Washburn out on the mound, and this one to get a chance to watch the crafty left-hander do his work, commanding all of his pitches. He needs to work ahead on the count and throw the off-speed stuff for strikes to expand the strike zone. Brought to you by Pepsi, here's the Blue Jays lineup. And our scouting report, John, who are we watching for today? Well, most guys you look at in the lineup and you think, okay, does he have power, does he have speed, or does he have both? Well, Adam Lynn is a power. Leading it off is Vernon Not Wells. White Sox winning last night. Really looking strong here going into the third game of the four-game series against the Jays. Well, and this is a team that's playing great baseball right now. No one playing better than them in the major leagues. Back I'm able to pull that one in. One away now. He swung hard like he wanted to drive this one, but got underneath it. Lines up just popping it up to second. And we've got Snyder batting. He's six for 21 over his career up the White Sox. Swing sets this one pretty well. Deep right center. And that one's down. That's the first hit we've seen. There's the throw. Safe at second. He gets in there. Plenty of time. And a moment to check out the defensive alignment for the White Sox. Steve, keeping an eye on anyone? Well, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all-around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. Plays off a called strike of the knees, 0 and 1. And you can throw the ball down in the zone with that kind of movement. It can be very effective. Checks his swing. They're going to call it a strike. We'll appeal this one down to third. Yes, he did. No hesitation on that call either. Swung on and missed. That's going to be strike three, and Adam Lind is gone. But when you're getting guys out with three pitches, you know you're dominating. That's a time when you know you are definitely in the zone, and he was on that at bat. RBI, that's the chance Aaron Hill has. Catcher can't control it. There's the throw, and he is safe at third ahead of that play. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right center. And it's going to be Quentin. And that's the third out. That'll do it. They get a man to third, but can't bring him home. And we'll get to see Sean Markham pitching. He's starting for Toronto. And he gets going against these White Sox hitters. What do you think's in store? Well, a good right-handed pitcher on the mound right here facing this lineup that can score some runs. It's going to be critical for him to keep the ball down in the zone and pitch to his capabilities. If he does that, he should have success. And here's the first one. First pitch to him, a curveball. Swung on and missed 0-1. Look at the lifetime numbers. 280 against the Jays. Ball lifted high in the air. Deep down the line and right. Gone! That's a dinger. And the first run of the ball game. Wow, it comes with a solo home run and a 1-0 lead. Oh, just barely got this thing started. They're already up one. Boy, if you're the leadoff guy, that's really something for the rest of the team to look at. You've got to believe maybe this is an offensive day. Now the power hitters in the lineup coming up next are got to be saying to themselves, I want to get there quick. Well, that's what you want. Run support for your pitching and attack the opposition. That's what the White Sox are doing right here.
Markham with the delivery. A swing and a miss. Ramirez, strike one. They are happy, Steve. Uh, this output is getting this game going in a hurry. Well, standing around on the field in the top half of the inning didn't seem to affect them because they came in swinging the bats. And we'll look to see if the pitching can settle in. A swing and a miss. Alexei Ramirez is retired. We're going to see the movement on the circle change here. Donerko at the plate. Well, leading the league in home runs. That's it foul by Canerco. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. And Lind with a catch. Two retired here. Carlos Quinton at the plate for two away. He's number one in runs scored in the league. Ground ball to Overbay. Line up for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. Any of these bats stand out, John? Well, you talk about a veteran presence in the middle of a lineup. Paul Canerco has been one of the more consistent power hitters in baseball over the last eight to ten years. He's a guy that just does it in a calm, quiet way. He doesn't put up the huge monster numbers, but he puts up the consistent numbers every year. But he also loves to get that big hit. Let's see if he can deliver one here in this one. Yeah, with two down, they've got a man on board. Uh, Gary, he, he can really swing the bat. Just a quality approach at the plate, day in and day out. That consistency is critical to their success. Nice way to get things started. The White Sox are leading. For the second inning. A chilly night that seems to be getting a little colder as we play on. And happy to bring you our broadcast on 2K Sports. Looked like the circle change, and it just misses. 1-0. and oh. The 1-0 -oh pitch. Fastball just misses, and he falls behind. 2-0. and oh. Well, that two-seam fastball has to be thrown down in the zone. You throw it up, it flattens out, and you can get hurt. Oh. And that's a ball. Now Encarnacion's going to be going with a green light, probably. Uh, he's falling behind 3-0, and oh, and let me tell you something. He has to come back with a strike to get something going right here on this hitter. Three balls, one strike, and Canacion is going to be looking for something in his zone now. Now let's see what he comes back with on the 3-1 pitch. On the way. And it's fouled away. And now the pitch to Encarnacion. Foul. Payoff pitch. Here's Washburn. Foul ball. Count holes at 3-2. Well, a lot of times when you're in that defensive mode, that off-speed pitch is not the best pitch to throw. Give the pitcher credit, though. He did put it in a good spot, and all he could do was foul it off. Oh! And he fouls another one off. Oh! And that's another foul ball. And now the pitch to Encarnacion. And strike three in Canacion right through that one. This one's right down the middle. He just swung and missed at it. Better check his bat for a hole. And Ruiz settles in. One out. Base is empty. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. Rios will field, and he meanders over to put it away. And if you're spending time with mom, show her you really care. For some quality time, tune in Mother's Day. It'll be Alex Rodriguez and the New York Yankees. They take their game to Boston to challenge the Red Sox at Fenway. That one will get underway at 8 Eastern. Looking forward to that one, Gary. That's going to be some kind of ball game to tune into. And Lyle Overbay in. 
Washburn set and delivers. Oh, what? Not a pretty pitch, no damage. Now the 1 0 pitch. Fastball misses badly. He's behind 2 0. Over Bay will foul that one away. And Over Bay swings and misses on it. That'll even the count up. And Lyle Overbay goes down swinging. No hits, nobody left on. And a good defensive half inning. The White Sox still ahead. And Alex Rios to lead off. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. Alex Rios. Cut fastball, swung on and missed, 0-1. Just a solid offensive player day in and day out, and a guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. Fouled off that first pitch, Owen won the count. Swing and a drive, deep left center. Lind will field. As he gets to it for the out. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in batting average. First in batting average with runners in scoring position. And they're also number one in ERA. Their pitching staff getting it done better than everybody else right now. You limit the runs scored, you give yourself a chance to win. It's going to be Przinski. Well, he hit hard on the ground towards third. And it gets through. Keep the streak going. That brings up Mark T. And AJ Przinski, you look at the size and you think you're going to get a lot of big power numbers from him. But that has not been the case. He's really more of an on-base percentage guy. He's an on-base guy. He works, counts. He makes pitchers work. And he, and he has the ability to inside out the ball the other way. Yeah, a guy that big, you think, you know, he's going to hit four or five hundred foot home runs. But he's not. He's a, he's a singles hitter. He's an opposite field guy, too. One of the best batting averages in the league. And that's a strike. Mark Tian's going to have to take very close approach on the next one. And he'll try to make the play. One. On to first. Safe. Can't get the back end of that one. Let's take a moment to check out the top batters around the league. Our leaderboard comes to you. Courtesy of State Farm. All of these guys, quality contact hitters. And, you know, when you're that kind of a hitter, it means that you can hit any kind of pitch the pitcher throws. And you're using the whole field. You're hitting it where it's pitched. Markham with a delivery. Didn't get around in time. 0 1. Well, his timing is just off right now. He swung way late on that cutter. And it's 0 and 2. Kotze just trying to punch one here. Three big hits in that game last night, and they'd love to get that contribution You're again out. today. Change up got him, and the side is retired. No runs on a hit, and they'll strand him. White Sox 1, Toronto nothing. Taking a look, Cito Gaston. And some good pitching last inning. He now hopes to get the necessary offense going, get him going in the right direction. Now Przinski positions himself, and they call it a strike. They're going to ask for the appeal to go to the first base umpire. No, he did not, so he will continue this at bat. Here's a swing and a liner to left center. That should be a base hit. At the plate. Here are the standings the in the Blue Eastern Day. Division brought to you by State Farm. 13. Still plenty of games Foul. to be played. In first place, it's the Yankees. In the second spot, it's the Orioles. Blue Jays in third. Fourth place belongs to the Red Sox. And it's the Rays in the last slot. And we're going to see Chavez here. Career numbers, one for two against Washburn. There's a smash towards the hole. Now plate. we're going to see Vernon Wells. Well, this is great patience at the plate. He lets Wells. the ball get deep in on the plate, comes in toward his hands, keeps his hands inside the ball, and drives it the other way. You make yourself a whole different ball player if you can take the ball the other way as he just did. First pitch, a fastball. That's in there for a strike. Back 
Pitch on the way. And it's 0 and 2. Wells is going to move up a little on the plate. Well, climbing the ladder with that four seam fastball, trying to get the hitter to elevate his eyes. He gets the strike on it, and the hitter doesn't pull the trigger. And he's on now. That's going to be another hit for them. Throw is in time, and he is out at third. Right fielder, number 45. And we've got Snyder batting. He doubled at his last appearance. One out with runners at first and second. Here's the first pitch. Just missed with the fastball. One and oh. Last season, a big 400 against the White Sox here in Chicago. On the outside corner, one and one. Well, the hitter lays off this pitch, realizing you can't do much. When you get that kind of four seam fastball down and away, it's tough to hit. Back I'm able to pull that one. That keeps those runners at first and second. And Lynn's batting. He was a strikeout victim last time through the lineup. And here's the first one. Watches a fastball that's in there. 0 and 1. Well, the pitcher's executing his game plan. He knows these hitters. He knows how he wants to pitch them. And now he's locating his pitches in exactly the right spot. He watches the 1-1 one, one pitch, takes a fastball, strike two. This is the go-to pitch for many pitchers in the major league. The fastball down and away. When in doubt, that's where you go. Line drive. And Conerco makes the catch. No runs and a couple of hits and two left on. The shutout is still in progress here at U.S. Cellular Field. And if you've just joined us, our broadcast of Major League Baseball on 2K Sports with John Cruck and Steve Phillips, I'm Gary Thorne. First pitch on the way to Damon. He sends this one in the air towards center. And so Damon retired. That's one down. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. And Alexi Ramirez is a guy who can do a lot of things offensively. Kind of like an Alfonso Soriano guy. A guy who can hit the ball out of the ballpark. He can also hit for a high average. Alexei Ramirez uh, first seen in the 06 World Baseball Classic. He had an impressive series. A lot of scouts uh, hoped, and the White Sox were the ones that got him. Oh, and he started out in 2008 as their second baseman. 2009, he got switched to shortstop with more natural position, and he seemed to handle it very well. And that'll bring up Paul Canerco. Well, Alexi Ramirez's season so far. Let's take a look at where he ranks compared to everybody else. Third in doubles, fourth in hits. And he's also ranked in the top five in hitting with runners in scoring position. A guy that's delivered in the clutch, getting it done, and being a run producer for his team. He's the league leader in ribbies. Markham with the delivery. Shot towards the hole. Boy, what a time now to capitalize if they can. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary, really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. Carlos Quinton batting now. There's one down. Leading the MLB in batting average. First pitch to Quinton. This one's grounded hard up the middle. That's one. And two. They pull off the double play. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. And it'll be the Blue Jays coming right up. It's Hill at the plate, and for RBIs, he's one of the best in the league. Aaron Hill. Washburn set and delivers. Ball. That one goes all the way back to the screen. It's a ball. Here's the 1 0. Taken by Hill, high for a ball. This is swung on, lifted to deep right field. It comes off the wall and right. So with nobody out, he's aboard at second after that double. Well, it's so important for your team to get guys on base and in scoring position early in the inning. And that's exactly what he did with that double. 
And Encarnacion's first look. Watches that fastball that goes by him for a strike. Now Gary's done a nice job working around the four hits he's given up here into the fourth. And that's about making pitches. And he's done an effective job when he's had to pitch out of the stretch. And that'll put Encarnacion on at first. And here's Hill going to try to score. And the run gets in. And Encarnacion is stretching it. Slide and he is safe at third. Just beat the throw. Toronto's offense creating multiple opportunities. And Ruiz settles in. Always good when you can get a ball game tied up again so you're not having to look up the offense doing a line drive towards short. Fielded by Ramirez. Over to Canerco. One away. And that will score the run tie broken. They've got the lead. One out, nobody on. And he starts over Bay out. Swing and a miss on the ball, probably out of the zone. I like the change of speeds. I don't like the location a whole lot. You, you can get hurt up there, but he wasn't able to time it right. And Jared Washburn delivering the strike quickly up. All the pressure on the hitter right now. He knows that he has to protect the plate in order not to strike out. Washburn set and delivers. And it holds at 0-2. Fastball in there, struck him out on number two. Well, that's paint in the black right there. He just throws it to the outside corner exactly where they wanted to get the punch out. It's McDonald at the plate. Over five at bats last year, he could not pick up a hit off the White Sox. First pitch way out of the zone, ball one. I got to be feeling good today. Picked up a couple hits in the game last night. Here's a swing, a ball lined softly towards second. That's caught. Side is retired. They pick up a couple of runs on two hits. They strand no one. The Blue Jays. Quick look at Ozzie Guillen looking up. No doubt right now thinking about getting back to a tie ball game. Now the first pitch. Ground ball to Overbay. He stops at first. It'll be a single. Number 51, Alex. Well, anytime you can get on base with no outs to start an inning, you know that an extra base hit will probably score you. But even if the batter behind you can figure out a way to get on base, now you have the potential for a huge inning. And Alex Rios up. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and runs scored. Top five. That's hit foul by Rios. You're he out. strikes out Alex Rios in a swing and a miss. Now coming to bat. I think Chicago the pitcher had him fooled on this one all the way through, John. He wasn't expecting that outside corner AJ delivery. Well, he just Krasinski. pulled the string on that pitch, and that's good, good stuff right there. It's going to be Przinski. And right now, top five and runs batted in in the league. First pitch on the way. Hit sharply towards the hole. The second for one. Now over to first and safe at first. Close play, not quite enough time to get him. Well, quick release by the third baseman. They get the lead runner at second, just not able to turn the double play. And Mark T into bat. In the top ten and hits. There's a swing and a drive deep to left field. Lind will field, and that's going to do it in this half inning. No runs on a base hit. They leave one man on at first. Blue Jays still protecting this lead. And we're going to see Chavez here. Catcher, number 13, Raul Chavez. And the first pitch. Strike one! Lays off that one, catches the inside, calls strike one. The key for any pitcher is establishing the four-seam fastball. Once you get that working, it gives you so many different options. Taps this one foul off to the left. Washburn set and delivers. The right center. And that one is in there, his second the hit today. For the Toronto that Blue will bring Jays. Vernon Wells up. 0-2 count, so you protect Vernon a pitch Wells. that's up, so a little easier to do that. Absolutely. You can fight it off, punch it over the infielder's head. That time, solid piece of hitting. 
The fastball is in there. It's 0 and 1. Unless you stay back and really think about going the other way, you've got no chance of hitting that four seamer down in the way. Swing and that's going to be hit behind the plate. And another foul ball. Well, with the way we keep track of pitch counts right now, you know 0-2, the pitcher wants to put him away. The fact that he has to throw another pitch just tells you how defensive a swing the hitter had to keep it going. One away. And brought to you by State Farm, our league leaderboard. The team's doing the best job of keeping runs off the board. The White Sox, number one. The Mariners in second. The Angels, third. Yankees, fourth. And uh, fifth best, the A's. Well, this whole staff seems to be in shutdown mode. And it doesn't matter if it's the starter, the reliever, or the closer. These guys are all getting the job done. It makes it so much easier on your offense when you know you don't have to score eight to ten runs to win a game. Strike two. Strike two. Travis Snyder now down on the count. Swings and hits this one. Going to be fielded by Rios. Two down here in the inning. Stepping up to the plate for the Toronto Blue Jays. Left fielder, number And Lynn's batting. Adam Lynn. First pitch on the way. Oh, what a drive. He smashed it. Rios will field. That one's grabbed. Side retired. No runs on a hit, and they'll strand him. And Mark Kotze up. 0 for 1 thus far. Number 30, Mark Kotze. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. Smash towards the middle. That's one away. He could make a video on how to field his position. He gets over and makes it look easy. Solid fundamentals out at first pitch. And it's Johnny Damon now. When I take a look at Johnny Damon's approach at the plate. Swung on, line to right center field. This one into the alleyway should be extra bases. And he's in at second with a double, one of them. Certainly Johnny Damon in 09 liked the new Yankee Stadium and that wonderful wind tunnel to right center. Well, Johnny Damon's, you know, has, has a swing that's tailor made for short porch and right field. And he took full advantage with the 24 homer. But the fact that he played in Boston and he's successful in New York tells you that this guy can play anywhere. Well, he's a veteran hitter and a guy really that I think rubs off on the people around him in the line of his approach, his focus, his professionalism really does lead in offense. And he's back easily, made a dive to get in. Oh, and one offering from Markham. Line shot into center field. That's two gone. Now the runner will have to hold at second. Time to take a look at the on base percentage leaders brought to you by State Farm. Getting on base is a philosophy, it's a mental state, it's a really an approach. And these guys understand that. They understand they have to do whatever they can to get on. They have the toughest at bats of any hitters in the major leagues. Paul Canarco to the plate, runner in scoring position. Home runs leads the American League. Here it comes. Ground ball to Overbay. And here's Damon going to try to score. And he scores. That is the tying run. Situations repeating themselves here. A chance to produce, and they are. One run. That comes in on that play. Let's see how it moves our chart. Brought to you by Pepsi. Well, the hitter makes an adjustment going down on the pitch at the bottom of the strike zone and drives it here. And you get a run scored if you're in that at bat. What you want to do is make contact. He did. That pays off. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. Steve has swung on, lined over the first baseman's head. Off the wall on a hop. Then Erko's heading for third. Now breaking down Carlos Quentin's season so far. Let's see how he stacks up compared to everybody else. First in doubles, first in batting average, and he's also the best at hitting in the clutch, leading at hitting with runners in scoring position. That ability to pick up the big run and come up with a big hit to drive in those runs. Runners at second and third with two outs. And the first pitch, 
Swung on, line to right field. And that one's put away to retire the side. So they scratch across a run, three hits and a couple left on. We've got a stalemate going here in Chicago. It's Aaron Hill to lead it off. One for two in the ballgame. Number two, Aaron Hill. Here's the pitch to Hill. That's it fouled by Hill. No balls, one strike, Washburn. 0 oh, 1. Good hard cutter in for a call strike. And you can throw the ball down to the zone with that kind of movement, it can be very effective. Here's the pitch. Swing and lined up the middle. And that is in there, the go-ahead run on board. That'll bring Edwin Encarnacion up. Boy, I don't know in that count, Steve, number one, the fact that he swung is kind of a surprise. I don't know how he hit that one wow. was. You're right. On an 0-2 count, you have to protect the plate. Sometimes it's a defensive swing, but sometimes it works out. And in there, he's two for three today. Hill headed for third. Toronto, here's a position to get something done. Three. He's coming off a two-hit performance Ruiz. in his last outing, and even though they lost, it's a good sign that he's starting to swing it. Now the first pitch. Oh. Cutter just misses. 1-0. and oh. Washburn set and delivers. That one is hit well. Quentin's there. Hill headed for third. Let's have a look at the current state of the race with the State Farm standings board in the Central Division. First place, the White Sox. In the second spot, the Twins. In third place, it's the Royals. In the fourth spot, it's the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Not a lot of expectations in Chicago this year, but the White Sox surprising everybody, sitting atop of the American oh. League Central right now and, and building that confidence level. Pauses, and now the 1-0. Swing and a rocket towards short. And Hill crosses the plate. Well, the rally here energized every new opportunity they take advantage of. It's McDonald at the plate. Steve, really good vibes here. Hitting is contagious, and when you do it late in a ball game and get a lead as they have, it's great stuff. You know, Gary, that at bat we just saw could prove to be the most critical at bat in this ball game as they've now taken the lead. Could be one of those situations that uh, decides the ball game. Right now it looks like their offense is ready to start clicking. The one and one. Swing and a bouncer up the middle. Out number two. State Farm brings you the teams leading the way offensively over the last ten games. The White Sox number one. The Orioles in second. In third the Indians. Jays fourth. And uh, fifth best, the A's. Neither club's had any trouble putting up runs on the board over the last 10 games. Offense has been firing on all cylinders. No balls, one strike, Washburn. And he fouls off another one. Cutter thought he had him, but it's one and two. The pitch. Ground ball. Ramirez, a nice play on that one. He'll throw one to first, and that'll do it for this happening. They pick up one on three hits, strand a man. The Blue Jays gaining the upper hand here. Cito Gaston checking it out. Things have been going right for him. His ball club today, uh, last half inning, they proved productive. Now they're looking to expand that lead. And liner towards the hole, and that gets the tying run on board. That's going to bring up A.J. Pierzynski. Breaking the action here. Let's look at the hit leaders on our State Farm leaderboard. Pierzynski. Got one of the best averages in the American League. Runner on first base, nobody out. 
The first pitch. He swings on that 0-0 delivery, misses the fastball. Strike one. 0 oh, and 1 offering from Markham. And it's starting to head out towards the wall. And he's thinking extra bases. Can't cut it off. It's going to roll to the wall. Rios is going to go for it. And Rios comes in. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. WPA graph. Let's see what damage was done with that double, courtesy of Pepsi. Now the pitcher left us one over the middle part of the plate right where the hitter can make contact good piece of hitting boy with the run scoring there that's a pretty pretty fat pitch in an RBI situation keep the rally going swing contact Wells that's one away the Blue Jays to look at what they've got here in May one game left for the White Sox that's tomorrow and it's a road trip to take on the Red Sox and their outfielder J.D. Drew that should be a great series they really match up well it will be a three game series following that they have to deal with Ian Kinsler the Rangers coming into town team that beat them pretty good in the last series and it's Mark Kotze in the box now you take a look at last year he was one for three off the Blue Jays towards center field two away now batting for the Chicago White Sox left field Johnny Damon looking to light things up here right now Gary homered back in the first inning first pitch on the way to Damon there's a swing and a drive deep right field and that one's put away to retire the side so they score once on two hits one man left We've got a stalemate going here in Chicago. Leading it off is Vernon Wells. 0 for 3 to this point. And Wells settles in. First pitch. First pitch inside with a fastball. Ball one. Here's the 1 0. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. And so Wells retired. For the Toronto Blue Jays, right fielder, number And we've got Snyder batting. He flew out his last time up. Washburn set and delivers. And he offers at the circle change and misses 0 and 1. Here's the pitch. Strike two. Travis Snyder now down on the count. And Przinsky calls for the pitch. Still 0 and 2. Another foul ball as Snyder fights. But the last thing you want to do in this situation is strike out. But with an 0-2 count, your chances are pretty good that you will strike out. But this defensive approach will keep him alive. The catch. And he has it for the second out. And Lynn's batting. Hasn't gotten a hit yet today. We'll see what he can do here. And here's the first one. Swing and a shot to third. It gets through. Go ahead, run on base. Uh, you have two outs in the inning. Your job is to get on base any way you can. Now they have the go ahead, run on base. Now Aaron Hill. Here's the pitch to Hill. Cutter misses badly. 1-0. Well, the starting pitcher right now is over 80 pitches, and this is a time when the manager and the pitching coach have to keep an eye and see if his velocity is dropping. If it is, you might want to think about getting him out. Ooh, tough to lay off there, but it's two and one. 
Oh, Lynn stealing. And he's in there at second base. Two two pitch. Swings and hits this one. Gonna be fielded by Rios. And that one's put away to retire the side. Will they pick up a hit but leave a man at second and fail to score? And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. Lined out last time on. Alexei Ramirez. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Can't wait long enough for that one, and he starts out with a strike. And it's 0-2. Alexei Ramirez going to have to protect now. The hitter's got to protect the outer part of the plate right here, down 0-2. Ball put in play. Snyder's there defensively. They take care of that one. Now a chance to see the league leaders in slugging percentage courtesy of State Farm. Well, it's such an asset to an offense when you hit the ball out of the ballpark, and these guys are clearly so important to their team. That ability to drive in a run from first base or to drive yourself in from the plate. And it's Paul Canerco now. Well, the thing about Paul Canerco now at the... Hit hard down the right field side. That's going to one-hop off the wall. Canerco is certainly one of those valuable players, especially in the American League as a bench player, because he does give pitchers concern. You know if you make a mistake, he can drive them. Well, he really can, and that's the thing with him. And You know, you remember back to that World Series year in 2005 with the White Sox, how clutch he was for that team that entire season, and he's still that way at this stage in his career. Well, there is one down here. You got a man on second base, going to give up the uh, pass, maybe try for two. Uh, a hit here scores a man on second, so obviously they're going to look for the double play. Here is the opportunity for the youngster Gordon Beckham. A great opportunity for him and the Sox. Runners on first and second with one out. Here's the first pitch. This is swung on, lifted to deep right field. It's off the wall on a hop. And the throw. That Erko's going to try and score here. And he comes in to score, and they have snatched that lead. Take the risk, and sometimes it pays off, but it does there. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a risk. There's no question about it. He got in safely, but I have to consider whether it's a risk worth taking. It's Alex Rios. Now, Steve, you get that feeling right now this offense is not going to be stopped. They've got themselves a lead late. Well, they needed that one right there, Gary. That was a big at bat. Now they have the lead. Liner towards the hole, and Overbay makes the catch, and the runners will have to stay now, put, second and third. For the Chicago White Sox. Now, showdown moment in this Number game right 12, now, Gary, with A.J. Brzezinski AJ coming to the Brzezinski. plate. He loves these sorts of situations. We'll see if he can get it done right here. Not an RBI double this last time. First pitch, here it comes. And a swinging strike on the first pitch by Markham, 0-1. It's always important to get that first strike in there late in the game in critical situations. And that's a strike. A.J. Przinski now behind on the count. Defensive stance at the plate. Well, just an unbelievably poor... A swing line to left center. That's in there. Should score the runner. Well, he's having a heck of a day so far. It's his third hit of the game in this one. They just can't seem to find an answer for him. And Casey Jansen is the pitcher. As the Blue Jays bring in their reliever. Pretty good performance today by the starter. All in all, pretty solid outing. Now it's up to the pen. Here's the pitch. Smashes that one towards the shortstop. And that one to fall in, and the run will score. Well, that's hit number 15, and then for that one, and boy, you get 15 hits in the game. The matter is, you can just sit back and relax and watch his team work. Katsay into the batter's box. 
And Steve, the offense continues to produce. They keep building on it. Now they're taking advantage of add-on time, and the opportunities are there. They're cashing in, adding on to this lead. And you hope the pitcher's a little frustrated right here, maybe makes a mistake in a bad pitch, and you add to it. Oh, one count as that started off with a strike. Well, you, you know, Gary, you're right. I mean, when a pitcher's in a jam like that, you have to take advantage of it. You get him a little bit flustered. He makes a mistake, capitalize on it. Let's see how flustered he is. Got him, and they're able to avert any more damage. Side retired. They pick up four hits in the inning and three runs across the plate. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. There's a look at Ozzy. Ozzy Gian. Right now his lineup is in overdrive. A exciting bit of run production. A good way to keep your manager happy. And Edwin Encarnacion standing in. He'll lead it off here. Inning number eight. And we'll get to see Tony Pena pitching as the White Sox bring him in as a reliever. I'll tell you what, this is one of those decisions you can go either way. He's pitched pretty well to this point, but it is getting late. And do you want to take any chances? The manager decides to go to the pen. And Encarnacion's first look. Ball. Off the plate with a fastball, and it's 1-0. Obviously getting late right now, Gary, and I think that from the pitching perspective, you'll trade an out for a run at this stage of the game, understanding that for every out you get, you're closer to winning. That swung on and grounded up the middle. Yeah. One away. Yeah. And a chance to check out the schedule for the White Sox. Tomorrow they finish up this Toronto series. Following that, it'll be a road series to play the Twins and their hitter, Delman Young. That's a team they beat pretty soundly the last time around. And that's going to be a two-game trip. And after that, they take their battle back into the AL Central. The Kansas City Royals will be hosting. So they'll be on the road quite a bit over this next stretch. Here's the pitch. First pitch, a slider for a called strike. Well, trailing right now, down three runs. You got one out here in the eighth. You got five outs left is the way you have to look at it. They need base runners. Get people on and hope somebody runs into one. A three-run deficit, not too much to overcome. Swung on and a ground at a first. And that's a base hit. Ruiz on board. Now a perfect situational hitting. This is exactly the time you want to go the other way. And what we're talking about is taking the ball where it's pitched. It's outside. Go the other way. And now Lyle Overbay. And he starts Overbay up. Swing. Hot shot. And they just try to hold him there at first. What a great snag right there to get the out. Tremendous athletic play. It's McDonald at the plate. Ground out victim last time through. First pitch fastball misses badly that time. 1-0. Now listen, this is still doable from the offensive perspective, Gary. They're only down three. It would be nice. Swung and a ground ball to third. Throws to first side is retired. No runs and a base hit. They leave one man on at first. The White Sox maintaining their lead. And it's Johnny Damon now. Drove in a run earlier in the game. Number 18, Johnny Damon. First pitch on the way to Damon. He makes contact, line drive. And Hill pulls it in. Look at the lineup who have been pounding the ball over the last 10 games, courtesy of State Farm. The Indians number one, the Red Sox second, the Angels third. White Sox fourth and fifth best the A's. Well some tough lineups right here to pitch against because a lot of power threats throughout the course of these lineups and they look for a pitch they can drive and when they get it they can take you deep. That one lofted in the air. Into the alleyway he'll likely get extra bases on this. He throws. Ramirez is headed for third. They apply the tag he is out at third. 
Number four. And here's Paul Konerko. Three for four thus far. And he starts Konerko out. Hot shot towards the hole. We talk about a guy who's just wearing out the opposition. That's a four hit day for him. He is locked in. Here's Carlos Quinton. Well, Gary, no real speed at first base right now. I think he just let the hitter swing the bat a little bit and not distract him and see if he can't hit one out of the ballpark. Here's the delivery. Ground ball to Overbay. Now I'll break it down Carlos Quentin's season so far. Let's see how he stacks up compared to everybody else. First in doubles, first in batting average, and he's also the best at hitting in the clutch, leading at hitting with runners in scoring position. That ability to pick up the big run and come up with a big hit to drive in those runs. Strike two, Gordon Beckham now will have to keep an eye out on the strike zone. Now swinging a shot toward second. And they get the force at second that time. That'll do it. So they pick up no runs, three hits, and leave one. The White Sox six, Toronto three. We catch a shot of Cito Gaston. Kind of feel what he's thinking right now. It's a very tough game. Uh, maybe... Maybe thinking about some adjustments as we move forward. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching. Chicago's bringing him in to close now. Johnny gets going here against these Toronto bats. What do you think we're going to see? Well, Bobby Jenks back up the middle. And that's a base hit. Chavez on. I mean, we're well, talking about a guy who's swinging a pretty hot bat right now. His third hit of this ball game, and it comes with nobody out in the inning. Now, here's Vernon Wells. And Wells settles in first pitch. Swinging strike on that pitch from Jenks. Well, I think right now they're looking to get a couple guys on and see if they can't get somebody to hit one out of the ballpark right here. So base runner's the key. Do not run into a hit in the air to left center. That gets down. The tying run coming up. I mean, uh, oh, one mistake right here. He throws it over the heart right of the plate. Here. and He Number pays for 45. it. And we've got Snyder batting. Last time up. Flew out. And the first pitch. Jenks gets him to swing and miss for a strike. Oh, he just swung late on that one. That's what you call getting gassed up. Called strike taken by Snyder. That's a great pitch right here. Pounding the strike zone, going up and away. A pitch he could catch up with. Mm, that's a good spot to miss. But it's a ball, one and two. One two from Jenks hit sharply towards the hole gets through tying run on and Chavez is home but you have to give them some credit they're not quitting that base knock now makes it just a two run game let's see if they can keep this rally going you got a lot riding on Adam Lynn's bat right here you can see he's determined to go up there and battle let's see who wins this battle. Four for 12 last season against the White Sox. Oh, there goes Gathright. And his throw, he is out. Great throw. Uh, defensively, you got one out here in the ninth inning. I mean, you want to make a play. Just get an out. You will trade a run for an out here with a two-run lead. The 1-0 now. And he looks at a fastball in there. 1-1. The hitter thought that ball was inside. It certainly wasn't low, and it looks like it was in there. Here's a swing and a line drive. It gets down, and that's going to drive in well. Coming to bat. For the like it's very game. interesting right now. That huge at bat two, cuts the lead Aaron to one. Hill. Now let's see where this thing goes. Now Aaron Hill. It is a difficult task. You're trying to get back into a ball game at this point, but they're close. 
Well, we know this offense can turn it around when they need to, Gary. Right now, they need to open things up for one more run. This is the problem right here. You just don't have the outs to work with. We'll see whether or not they've got it in their bats. Strike one. Strike one. Jenks evens the count. Now, that hit was the late shift in momentum that we thought could happen, and now we're going to see if the pitcher can answer. That's hit foul by Hill. One two from Jenks and a great pitch catches Aaron Hill looking at strike three. Well, this punch out right here will keep this game close as it gets later and later. Took only four pitches on that at bat to get him out of there. Man, not a quality at bat right there. He didn't make the pitcher work. He got out of there quickly. And Encarnacion's first look. And that's in there. Jenks ahead 0-1. It's important for that pitcher to get the first strike in there. Now he can go in a number of different directions. And that's a strike. And Canacion's going to have to take a defensive position here. The pitch. And it holds at 0 and 2. And that's another foul ball. Well, you can tell right there that the batter is in protection mode. Anything close, he's just trying to put it in play. The fact that he fouled it off will keep the set bat going. Wanted to get him fishing, but he misses. One and two. And he struck him out, and the ball game is over. Well, they got that tying run on base, stranded over at first. Well, Gary, Chicago comes away the victors in this one. They play good all-around solid baseball with contributions from many players. Well, it's time here for the Pepsi Clutch performers. Great mound work, Jared Washburn. But you know, Gary, there's no way you can win baseball games without great starting pitching. And he came through in this one with the most important performance of the game. And that's basically the definition of what it takes to be the Pepsi clutch performer of the game. And Steve, that ought to send these folks home happy. Oh, no question about it. They get the win in a close game. A lot of excitement and enthusiasm and ready for the next one. I guess it's that time again. We wrap up this 2K Sports broadcast of MLB. John, Steve, our entire 2K Sports crew, I'm Gary Thorne. Adieu, adieu.